All right, so how's it going, everybody? So today I'll be giving a quick intro into React Native and its significance into the mobile app development. So it's no surprise that we are obsessed with our phones. If we walk down the streets right now, guaranteed we'll see somebody with their heads buried in their phones. Right. Like, no exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> so part of what makes our phones so addicting is because of native apps. Native apps are basically applications made specifically for a device or platform, such as Android, iOS, Windows, and sometimes BlackBerry. <laughs> so um, this is opposed to web applications, where, which are applications made specifically for the browser. All right, so uh, we all have experienced uh, native applications before. Games such as Angry Birds and uh, popular social media apps like uh, Instagram and Facebook have uh, millions of users. The thing though is native apps cost a lot more than web apps to develop because like a single app can be written differently for uh, each different platforms whereas a web app only needs to be written once. So if an app can, be, uh, can do exact same thing through a browser as it can uh, through a native environment, why not just save on the cost and develop, develop pure web applications? The main difference is user experience. Applications created for your phone can take advantage of all the functionalities that your phone provides, such as your GPS, microphones, camera, and many more. And so because of this, native applications can be more interactive than a normal web application. So up until now, we've been learning and creating mostly web apps. But in our future uh, careers as developers, uh, we'll most likely uh, encounter or work with uh, mobile apps. So you know, web apps are cool, but I also believe that native apps are important as well. So currently, there are two main platforms that most phones run off of, Android and iOS. So there can be an argument for Windows, but I believe it's a dying breed. So at this point, we don't really need to worry about them or any other platforms. And as proof, as of 26, uh, 2016, 86% of all mobile users are Android uh, users. And coming in at second, at 13%, is iOS. So that is 99% of all uh, global, global users that are you know, these, that are using these two platforms. So creating an app that serves both of these platforms is a no-brainer. However, each platform and the respective devices have their own hardware and software. So naturally, when it comes to creating an app for these particular devices, you need to write them in their own native code. And for Android, that native code would be Java. And for iOS, it will be Objective-C and more recently, Swift. So in order to get access to this wide range of mobile users, companies who need to hire a developer or developers that is proficient in both uh, Java, Objective-C, and or Swift. So at this point, I really, really don't want to learn a no whole other language just to, to create my first mobile app. So I'm feeling like this guy right now. Super, super frustrated. But luckily, there is a framework out there that allows us to write just one set of code, and it can be deployed for both Android and iOS devices. And that framework, as you can see, is React Native. So React Native can do all the fancy stuff that Java and Objective-C can do, but with Java and React, JavaScript excuse me, and React, which is perfect for us. So for the most part, for the most part, React Native looks and feels <coughs> almost exactly like React. It has uh, classes, components, render, and uh, it, it doesn't show, but it also has props. So, and as mentioned before, this set of code right here is enough for both Android and iOS platforms. So this makes React Native a very, very powerful tool. But the thing is, how is it that an Android phone that runs on Java or an iOS phone that runs on Objective-C able to understand JavaScript? Well, React Native have their own native components that on runtime, Android and iOS devices will process as their own native code. So for example, 
for React Native's own view component uh, on, an on, on an Android device, it will be viewed as its own native code view. And on an iOS, uh, it will be viewed as its own native component, UI view. All right, so like with most frameworks, React Native will have their own components that we need to learn before using it effectively. I gather some of the most common components that you'll definitely use if you're planning on uh, using React Native. And those components are animated, image, platform, style sheet, text, touchable, and view. So there's a bunch more that you can look up and, and see what they do using React Native documentations. All right. So even with a basic understanding of React Native, we still need a de development tools that will help us in creating our mobile app. Because unlike in web apps and native apps, we can't just get on a browser and see what our code does. For Android device, we'll need uh, Android Studio, which is to our, well, to your, uh, to our left. Wait, my left, your right. <laughs> and for iOS devices, we'll need Xcode, which is to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so these development tools are important because you will, need, you will want to see whether or not your code will work on either the Droid or Apple phone. So if you're planning on servicing both Android and Apple platforms, I might have lied a little bit about just running your code just once. Because even though if React Native can work with Android and Apple, you'll still need two sets of code, uh, obviously in different files for Android and iOS. But the thing is, most of the code will be almost exactly the same, except for a few like differences in native code. But I mean, if you're only planning on just servicing one platform, I guess you don't really need to worry about that. But okay, getting back to our developer tools, um, Xcode and Android Studios both have a GUI, and for Xcode, it looks something similar. Uh, it looks something like this. And um, Android Studio actually have like probably something uh, very very similar. But one of the things I, I really want to touch upon is like the emulator. So I believe that the emulator is very important, is because. Uh, the emulator simulates how your code would look on the mobile device. So every time you want to make a change in your code and you want to see what, your, what it does, the emulator will actually help you out with that. Uh, so as an FYI, unlike in web apps where we can almost immediately see our ed edits, you know, most of the times, but just by hitting refresh, uh, both Android Studio and Xcode will need to rebuild each time you, you edit. So it may take like a couple of seconds before it renders. So whether you choose to uh, service either Droid, Apple, or both platforms, or React Native documentation will, will have like a step-by-step -step instruction on how to set up Xcode and Android Studio. However, sim like, you know, simply trying to get like a Hello World onto an emulator is a huge process. So you know, if you go to the documentations, it is super, super long, which, you know, is an extremely daunting task for trying to build your first web app, uh, mobile app. So again, luckily, there is a way to get your feet wet before diving into React Native and its developer tools. And that is through something called uh, Create React Native App, or CRNA, with Expo. And also its developer environment, XDE, which looks significantly a lot simpler than this bad boy right here. So by downloading Expo on your phone and laptop, you don't need to worry about Android Studio or Xcode. In fact, you don't even need to worry about how to um, get your uh, first starting code. By selecting a like, new project on Expo XDE, a new file with boilerplate code is made uh, readily available. In fact, the code that I showed before, uh, this one right here, uh, was provided to me on startup by Expo. So, uh, oh, one last, one last thing. Uh, so publishing onto the Play Store uh, and, uh, what is it, Play Store and Apple Store, it takes extremely long. So, uh, this is a really, really long process. But with Expo, if you want to share your project with anyone, just have them download the Expo app, and they can either, they can either, uh, they can either scan your project's QR code, or you can simply just send them the link uh, you through like XDE share option. And not only does it make uh, sh sharing a lot simpler, 
but like testing out your app among different people uh, is, makes, is a lot simpler as well. So in conclusion, you can start creating your, your first mobile app with the technology that we learned today through React Native Code. So get out there and do it. Thank you. Woo!